Hello, in today's Archeo Scoop, my top three headlines are as follows. Headline number one, quite appropriately for a themed week based around Tutankhamun, actually comes from the Qom al Amar or Sharuna necropolis in Egypt. Um, it is here that archaeologists are getting rather excited. They seem to have found evidence of, uh, well, preserved impressions of blood vessels on the inside of a mummy's cranium inside the skull. Now this is a very rare occurrence, it doesn't usually happen, but they think that something during the mummification process uh, made these, these vessels uh, leave an impression on the bone. Now, uh, the mummy, who has been named or dubbed W19, an archaeological designation, was preserved using substances such as bitumen, linen and other standard substances. And they're not quite sure how this happened. The best guess is that there was just a, like a Goldilocks zone, a perfect thing occurred where maybe the temperature was just right, the, the ambient um, uh, um, moisture in the atmosphere, maybe the placement in the room, direct or indirect sunlight, so on and so forth. <clears throat> affected the, 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 the chemistry of what was happening and left these impressions inside the skull. A fascinating discovery. And um, it seems that this was the only one out of around 50 bodies that have been recovered that has this particular impression. So, um, rather impressive. No pun intended. <laughs> Nonetheless, this headline is well worth a read and I thought it just fitted nicely with the theme. So that's headline number one. Headline number two comes from Stirling, where um, archaeologists are doing Stirling work just outside Stirling train station, or Stirling station as some would rather me say. Um, it seems that actually one of the largest excavations of a medieval site in the city for a long time, if not ever, is underway. Uh, this is on the site of a former Dominican friary which was destroyed during the Reformation under Henry VIII, and they found human remains, evidence of a wall, and also animal bones, uh, medieval ceramics, and also garden soil. So quite a mixture of things have been found on site, and the county archaeologist, uh, or the council archaeologist, extremely excited, Murray Cook, said this is an exciting and totally fascinating find. Now the reason why I say it like that is that when I read the headline it actually says totally fascinating find, <laughs> and um, I couldn't help it, but nonetheless he's right, it is a very interesting find. He goes on to say that this is real living history being brought to light, and it's the reason that people get into archaeology in the first place, and he's not wrong. So if you're in the area or if you're just interested, why not read the story and if you can pop on down to the site. I'm sure I'm sure well the archaeologists would you know want to have time to get on with the dig, but also I'm sure that they'll be happy to answer any questions you might have if you're peering over in an excited manner. Just tell them you were sent by the news article and they'll listen. Um, so there you go, that's headline number two. Well worth a read. Headline number three comes from North Wales and the Isle of Anglesey, just off the northwest coast there, uh, and Bomaris, more specifically Bomaris Castle. Now it seems that the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust and the local council are butting heads over plans to install flood defences. The castle does lay very low in the land. It's actually I'd be amazed if it was that far at all above the water table. It's very very flat land um, and very much liable to flooding. I have been there myself and it's, it's usually quite damp, especially behind the castle. Well this is where the council wants to install these flood defences. Uh, the Gwynedd Archaeological Trust says that um, the planned um, defences, this bund apparently as it's called, um, falls within the essential setting of the World Heritage Site and therefore will ruin the site. Now, Bomaris Castle is a fascinating castle, actually. It's one of the string of English castles along the north coast, my favourite of which is Conwy Castle, which I've talked about in a previous video. This particular castle dates back to around 1295, and had it been completed, it would have been the most perfect symmetrical castle in the world. Sadly, they ran out of funds, and only really sort of the front portion was fully finished. But nonetheless, this, this is, a, this is a still a very important castle, and a very interesting site if you ever get a chance to visit. The question though here is, what is the balance, what the balance should be? Should we be more concerned about the integrity of the castle in the landscape, or the integrity of the castle, that is to say, whether or not it gets flooded out constantly or, you know, seasonally? Um, and I have to say, I'm sort of leaning towards, you know, flood defences. That said though, there must be, there surely must be ways where the two organisations can uh, meet in the middle. There must be flood defences which aren't quite so obvious in the landscape and which will help to meet the agendas of both the uh, Gwynedd Archaeological Trust and also the Council. 
I suppose ultimately everyone just wants to see what's best for this castle. And if you get a chance, do go and visit. It's one of my favourites, but not quite my favourites in Wales. So there you go, guys. There's my top three headlines uh, for, for, from the past few days. For other news stories, all you need to do is check out the links below in the video information, as ever, for, for their field delectation and delight. And um, do enjoy. As I say, I'm enjoying this themed week based around Tutankhamun, and I'm just actually off to ed keep on editing on the next video. So uh, while you're reading those news stories, I'll be busy working away. As ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.